Today we're teaching place, which is one of my absolute favorite directives, as it's so versatile, it can be used in so many different types of situations, and it's actually a really wonderful tool for teaching impulse control in both puppies and dogs. I'm here with Paige Felling and her wonderful rescue dog, George, who, and correct me if I'm wrong, but George has never been introduced to place. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he has been introduced to treats, which he really likes, yeah. <laughs> so tell me how you would find personal use with a, a directive like place. So the the biggest thing I think we would love to use place for is dinner time, dinner prep when the kids are here and I'm walking around and the dogs are kind of underfoot. And then also maybe when people come to the door or we've got people here, like kids running around and we just kind of need them somewhere we can see them and they're near us but not underfoot. So yeah, those are really great reasons. Like I said, place is just such a super versatile directive. So, um, which brings me to kind of the point, like what is place? What does place actually mean? Well, it's not the same as like a sit stay or a down stay where you don't want the dog to not move or not change positions. Place is really about duration and length of time. So when we teach this directive, it's about staying within a designated area or a designated space and not coming out of that space until we're actually asked to. So given a free command or an off command or whatever command it is that you use to release them from that space. So that way they can stand up, turn around, lay down, as long as they don't leave that area. Mm -hmm. So just to differentiate places, stay in this area until freed rather than don't move like mm -hmm. a sit stay or a down stay. So it helps with duration. All right. So to get started right into it, the very first thing we're going to talk about is preparation. What do you need? You need a super cute dog like George <laughs> to begin yeah. with. Um, some treats, which we have and George has discovered already as well. Uh, and when I say treats, I really mean a motivator. So if your dog is motivated by food, like George is, then you have food as a motivator. If they're motivated by tug or play or a certain toy, you can use that as well. But since George loves his treats, his cookies, we're going to use those to teach him place. All right, and aside from that, the only other thing that you need is something that differentiates surface area. So here we have a dog bed. This is perfect to use. You can also use a yoga mat. You can use a small area rug. There's one over here uh, by Paige's stove that would be also an excellent um, material to use for teaching place. But really all you're looking for is something that they can differentiate surface to surface. So we're moving on to the next step, which is association. I'm gonna associate this mat or this different area with good things, with positive things. This is especially helpful if your dog has never seen the actual item that you're using to teach place. But before we do that, if you like this kind of video, please let me know by hitting that like button and go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell notification if you wanna see more content just like it. All right, you ready, George? So all I'm gonna do is let George see that I'm tossing treats to the mat, which he's having a difficult time seeing. There we go. And I'm going to continue throwing some on the mat that he can find while he's there and while his head is down and while he's in place. So in the association process to make things a little bit easier for George, we went ahead and switched out the bed. As you can see, this bed here has a flat surface. So it's going to be a little bit easier for George to see the treats, to get the treats and kind of stay focused on the actual task at hand instead of getting kind of lost and trying to uh, look for all of his food reward. I'm just gonna toss some treats and you can see he's already finding these a whole lot faster. So I've gotta be faster, because again, the name of the game is to get it down before he gets his head up and comes off of the mat. He's a master with this one. This is way easier. So all I'm doing is feeding him treats for being on the mat and I'm associating. Now he's looking up at me, I want him to get down again. There you go, good boy. I gotta be faster with George. Best thing to use is just take up half of their kibble in the morning if you're gonna do a training exercise like this so that they don't get completely overloaded with calories. Good boy. And that's really it. Associating this new item in a positive way. So the next step involves using a leash. And the reason I'm gonna use a leash is just because it makes it a little bit easier to communicate with the dog what I'm asking. George, come here. Let's put your slip feet on. That's a good boy. George obviously loves his leash too. He's got a good positive association with that as well. What I want is for him to follow me. And the leash just makes that communication a little bit easier. So I'm gonna bring him with me, just walk around with him for a minute, and get him used to the idea that I want him to follow, which he very willingly does. That's a good boy. 
The next step is just starting the association with the actual word. So I'm gonna walk George across the mat, and as soon as that fourth paw hits, because I want all four paws on the mat, I'm gonna mark that with place. And I'm gonna do this over and over and over again to help him learn the association with the word, or also known as the marker. Place, good boy. Off, good. Boy, George, come on. That's it, good boy. Good boy, ready? Place, good boy. Off, good boy. Now you'll notice I'm also using off. Um, if your dog does not know the off directive yet, this is a great place to start building that in as well. But I need to have a differentiating command for him to let him know that it's time to come off of the mat so that he knows when it's okay to come off and when he needs to stay on it after we've built this in a little bit. So we just practice that repetitiously over and over and over again for a good five minutes or so. And you can practice this five, 10 minutes at a time, but it's really important to give them a break in between. So whether you pick it up an hour later or at least give them a five minute rest or so, that way they can decompress a little bit and stay focused with you. So we're gonna give George just a few minutes to kind of take a breather here and then we're gonna kick it into the next gear. So we just gave George a break. It was about a 10 minute break and he's been nudging me and uh, nudging my treat pouch and letting me know that he's ready to go. He wants to work. So we're gonna pick up the leash. George, buddy, come here. And we're gonna move on to the next step. Now, animals are, animals are, dogs are literally the only species that we know of that can respond to an understanding of what a finger pointing means. So I'm gonna use this to help reinforce place with George as the marker by just giving him direction with my finger to help build that in as some understanding as well. It's all about building different modes of communication. All right, George, ready? So this time I'm gonna to point to it and I'm gonna ask him to place and see if he follows that. Ready? Place. Yes, good boy! And he auto sits, which is beautiful tells me he's very checked in and very tuned in and interested in this exercise. And then just like before, I'm gonna ask him as I walk with motion, off, good. George, place, yes. And once that fourth paw hits, I'm gonna let him know that that's exactly what I wanted. Same with finger, off, yes, that's it, good boy. A little bit of encouragement if needed with a that's it or a good, place, Yes, good boy. You can see he's thinking through this. He's not 100% sure, but he's using that brain and that's what we wanna see. We want his brain working. Off. Yes, good. So just like the last step, we're gonna do this over and over and over again, at least for a good five minutes. Place. That's it, good boy. Now we're gonna let Paige practice a little bit because this is, after all, her dog. And I wanna bring up something that's really important. It's that everyone in the household, everyone in the family has the same expectations and uses the same directives. So for something like this, when the dog is first learning, it's really important that everybody practices with the dog. So even though he'll do it for me and he knows what I'm asking, I want him to know that you mean the same thing and you're asking the same thing and that your kids are meaning the same thing and asking the same thing. All the doors we've opened and all the books we've closed Words just come together, story that we never told So if I shake in for my own You said just keep holding on if you Okay, so we've done all that we can do, at least in a one-day session, because the important part is really building in the understanding of what you're asking. He has no concept of the word place just yet, so repeating this exercise over and over and over again is what's gonna help him build not only a positive association with the activity, but also a better understanding of what you're trying to communicate with him. So you might only work with your dog for between five and 10 minutes or 15 minutes max, but you wanna do that two, three, four times a day just to keep it fresh and get going that kind of muscle memory response to what it is that you're working with them on. The more frequently you do it, the more likely they are to understand what it is you're doing. So again, the point is not lo a long duration. I don't wanna work with George for an hour on this. I just wanna work about 10 minutes at a time. 
ideally between five and 15 minutes, so about 10 minutes at a time, repetitively three or four times throughout the day, so he really gets it. That keeps it fun, keeps it exciting, it doesn't get boring, and we don't wear him out to the point where he just doesn't wanna do it anymore. And then what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll move on to the next step to really level up this command so that you can use it for safety reasons, for good manners, and so on and so forth. Okay. All right, good boy, George. All right, so we're back with Paige and George. It's been a couple of weeks. Uh, we had some scheduling conflicts, so we initially wanted to practice what we learned for about a week, but we're back here, and we're gonna try to take place to the next level. Um, all right, well, let's get into it. Let's do a little bit of practice just to see where he's at and how responsive he is to the marker, to the, to the actual directive place itself, and then we can talk about how we can um, continue to reinforce it and use it specifically in the area we want to, but also in different areas if we want place to change. Mm -hmm. It's a very versatile uh, command. All right, George, are you ready? Okay, off. Good boy. So there I'm just giving off as the coming out of the place command. Georgie. Place. Good boy. So there, I'm just giving a little body pressure since we're gonna build in duration today. I don't want him to come out of the area until I ask him to. So that's all I'm doing there. I just stepped in a little bit just to let him know that that's not what I'm looking for. Good, that's it. Always okay to encourage them a little bit. Uh-uh. He's super hyped up and ready to go. Yeah. Some, sometimes too, he's just excitement energy. He wants to work for his cookies. He's very food motivated. So sometimes if you're gonna work on a new skill or practice, you can wear him out a little bit, just with a little bit of play time or getting the zoomies out, get some exercise in, and then we can work. So again, just a little body pressure to remind him that I don't want him coming off yet. This is all in building duration as well. So I'm walking in the direction. I am giving him some direction with motion just to see, but now I'm gonna test him and see if I can do it without that. Off. Good boy. So let's see if I stop here and ask him. George, place. Place. Nope. So we don't quite have the, the word. He doesn't quite understand what I'm asking of him. So that's okay. Just repetition will we'll build that in. Place. Yes, good. So what I'll do is I'll just take it a step back where I'm giving direction and do that several times and then I'll remove my motion and ask him without it, if that makes sense. Off. So I'm just gonna see if that'll work with him for a minute, if he can kinda understand what I'm looking for. George, place. Yes, all four paws, good boy. I didn't ask off and he didn't come off, so I'm rewarding that. Take a step back, I'm just building in some duration. Good boy. Off. Yes, good. You ready, buddy? Place. You're cheating. <laughs> you're cheating. There it is, good boy. I told you you're my ball. Through the wind and fire, we try to hold on. All the doors we've opened and all the books we've closed. Words that come together, a story that we never told. So far you shake in for my... Okay, so what I was just doing is practicing asking place of George a uh, little at a time, a uh, little further distance away and away and away. So as I'm walking up to the mat and I say place, you're in place, good boy. Um, I'm getting this close to the mat and he's going on to the mat. So then the next few times I did it, I was doing it a little bit further away and asking him from here to try to build a better association of the word and the marker. And then the next time I did it, I was up to here. I would ask place so he has this distance to go to his bed. So the whole idea, the whole concept really is to build further and further distance away and still have the same ask and have him still end up in his place. So the more he hears the word and has a better understanding of what we're looking for, the further and further I can get away to where if I'm in the other room and I ask him place, he knows what that means and where to go. And that's kind of what we've been building up on over the last few minutes. Oh. And you can tell he's a little tired. I've totally worn him out. So again, with training exercises, it's good to keep it at about 15 minutes if you're doing something new and repetitive. Um, anywhere from five to 15 minutes is good so that you know they don't lose interest because it's not fun anymore, it's boring and repetitious, and they get excited that they can still win and do what you're asking. So brain breaks are really good when working on a new repetitive skill. 
So once that's really practiced with his bed and his one particular area, that area mainly in the house where you're gonna have him when he's in place, so for eating dinner or cooking or that sort of thing, then you build it into other places in the household. So no matter where you are, what you're doing, whether you're out and about or you're at home and you're in a different room, you can ask him to place and stay within a certain area for a duration of time, not just the bed in the one place. So George, off. He's, he was almost ready to lay down and take a nap. <laughs> So for example, like if he's allowed on the furniture, George, place. And so it's just another round of repetition using the same thing, the same word in another area. And I'll do the same thing for building duration in this area too. So I asked him to place up here and place means in this area until I give you the release, right? So I'll do the same thing. I'll back away and I'll reward him for staying because this is a new situation, new place, right? He's got to learn it means the same thing in all situations with all people. So practicing with all family members helps. And I'm sure they'll have fun placing him on all sorts of stuff. Right. Chairs, beds. <laughs> Good boy. And then off. George, off. Good boy. So just like that. So you can transfer what you're asking. Good boy. To anywhere in the house. <laughs> Good boy, George. Place. Yes! I got it. That's a good boy. Good boy. And then we'll step it up. I'm just gonna turn around. Does the same thing when I'm not paying attention. That's a good boy. Just walk out of the room for a sec. As long as you hold it, we're good. If I walk out of the room and he doesn't hold it, I just repeat it not quite as far. Okay. And then I'll take it a little further. Uh -huh. So just a step at a time. He's being so good. I a good boy. Good boy. So I really just want to say thanks, Paige, for letting us come use George as our test subject to teach place. Of and uh, if you have any questions or any comments and need some help teaching your dog place as well or want to ask about anything that we did in this video in particular, please feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try to answer your questions. Also remember to let me know if you like the video by hitting the like button. Feel free to subscribe and hit the bell notification if you want to learn more ways to work with your dog and build that really solid relationship and bond. So thanks so much Paige, we Thank really appreciate you. the time. Thanks.